Hello, um, welcome to the um, short webinar for webinar for the Level 3 Applied Science course. Uh, my name is Matt Rossin. I'm going to take you through um, some of the information that hopefully you'll find useful about the course. I am one of the course tutors. In fact, I'm the first year uh, um, personal tutor for the current Level 3 Applied Science first years, and I'm the lead internal verifier for the BTEC science course as well. OK, so the first thing we'll have a look at is the structure of the course. So there are two options that we have on this course. We have an extended diploma, um, which is uh, the longer course, the uh, equivalent to three A levels. And it, and it consists of building up the same number of UCAS points as um, three A levels. This would be students attending colleges four days a week. And there are a range of uh, units that students will complete 13 overall. Um, some of them are mandatory, some of them optional, and we will talk through some of those in, in a little while. Um, currently, it's set up to allow progression to our um, foundation degree in biosciences at the college at the University Centre of South Devon. So um, they're, they're, they're linked to what the students would do on that. The second option is a diploma, which is equivalent to uh, one A level, uh, sorry, to two A levels. And alongside that, you would choose to do uh, an A level as well. Um, and the, the A levels they could study include criminology, sociology, business studies, law, English literature, and philosophy. Uh, just to note that criminology, although we call it an A level, it's not uh, actually an A level uh, either, but um, it's in the A level grid. Um, just uh, on a side, the students as, as part of this course um, will be within the A-level department. So um, we would include them in a lot of the activities and um, other um, um, optional things that students can do with the A-levels. OK, um, you'd likely to be in college for five days a week for that one due to the nature of the timetable of the A-level um, courses, the, the different subjects being spread out over a number of days. Um, in the second year of the course, you could do core maths and choose an AS in the second year or do the EPQ qualification, which is the extended project qualification as well, um, which is something that's very useful for students going on to university. Um, the BTEC Applied Science is also part of Level 3 Lab Technician Apprenticeship. And we have a couple of students at the moment, a couple of our apprentices on that as well. That subject to learn is finding a work placement um, there can be some help from the college help zone staff in order to find a work placement as well. OK, the entry requirements in, in order to get onto the course are um, for the applied science. It's five GCSEs at grade four or above, um, and we would like you to include maths and English and the science in that um, because of the nature of the course. There's lots of maths, um, a fair bit of written work, and obviously you need the science knowledge background as well. Um, the additional A-level, if you were to do the diploma and the A-level, there's subject specific requirements for those as well. And again, we can provide some information for those if that's uh, a consideration. That's dependent on each subject. Um, they're slightly different for each subject. OK. Um, in terms of assessment, it's a quite a mixed course. There's a mixture of internally assessed assignments and exams. Um, so you'll get um, assignments that are set by the teachers. Uh, guidance comes from the exam board, but we set the assignments and mark them. Um, there are two mandatory units uh, assessed by an external exam, uh, one in each year. Um, and there are also two other units that are assessed by, uh, assessed by an exam that's based on pre-release material, which means the students learn some information, learn some concepts throughout the year. And a few weeks before they sit an exam, they get some material released to them, um, some case studies, for example, um, and some data or some data. And they have to analyse that in a written exam a few weeks later. So they have some preparation time based on a case study. Um, all the other units, as we mentioned, those that are, are written are um, written assignment work and there's a lots of practical experiment write-ups in particular um, units as well. OK, and um, in, in the first year, uh, these are the units we are planning to study next year. <coughs> Excuse me for the diploma, 
and the extended diploma for so both of the pathways there now students do principles and applications of science one um, so lots of basic uh, grounding in the three sciences biology chemistry and physics um, in that section uh, unit two they do practical scientific procedures and techniques so uh, lots of lab work look, looking at the basic procedures that you would use in in science it's a bit more of a chemistry based module uh, unit four is science investigation skills so students learn how to carry out full investigations um, from kind of uh, design and hypothesis through to carrying out the techniques and, and evaluating them as well um, and we also do unit 10 biological molecules and metabolic pathways that's very much a biochemistry biology module based on um, uh, kind of uh, how mo molecules work in the body and so on okay um, those doing the extended diploma do two extra units they are biology based um, so unit eight physiology of the human body systems that will look at the heart the lungs uh, and all the body systems a range of body systems sorry inside the body how they work and their functions um, and we will also do unit 11 genes and genetic engineering looking at the basics of dna and genetics how inheritance work and genetic engineering such as um, uh, you know, genetically modifying organisms and cloning and how they all work. And there'll be opportunities to do some practical work of genetically modifying bacteria in the class for that as well. OK, so that's the year one units. The second year um, for the diploma and the extended diploma, students will do laboratory techniques and their application. So much more looking about how labs work. Um, you know, in the workplace as well, looking at those ideas of how how things work in the workplace and how we can apply techniques. Um, so that's very much useful for those working um, as part of the apprenticeship. They they do um, work alongside the lab technicians and, and see how their jobs work. Um, unit five is principles and applications of science two. Um, so that is um, another mixture of biology, chemistry and physics as well. Unit six is an interesting one. It's an investigative project. So on the outset, students can identify an area of interest and attempt to do a full kind of uh, scientific investigation, uh, design a project uh, and analyze and evaluate the project as well. And in theory, that can be on anything they would like, but obviously that's restricted by the techniques and um, equipment, although we do have some good equipment. Um, and then they do unit 17 microbiology and microbiological techniques so this is looking at bacteria and pathogens um, how things look down the microscope they'll be um, plating out bacteria on petri dishes and looking at how they grow and how we can look at them um, so in the, at the current times that's a very interesting module um, then there's three extra units the extended diploma do unit seven is contemporary issues in science so this is a module um, where students just look at a range of issues that are going on in science today. Essentially, it's a science in the news idea. Look at how, how things might be manipulated, manipulated. Look at how statistics might be changed and presented. Again, very pertinent in, in the uh, situation we find today. Um, and then they will, that's a, a case study they will be given and um, have to um, analyze the the issues with that um, and how the evidence is being presented and uh, bias and things like that. They do uh, human regulation and reproduction. So that's looking at um, how the liver and the kidneys work um, internally um, and reproductive systems and looking at fertility and contraception and the hormonal role uh, of other parts of the body in the whole reproductive process. And that has a very much medical um, link to it, looking at um, you know, how fertility and so on can be treated. And then the final unit, unit 19, practical chemical analysis, lots of practical based lab work, looking at um, all the different techniques we can use to analyze chemicals and chemistry. Um, and we have lots of uh, kit, useful kit for that. So that's a range of the units. There's much more information can be found on uh, the website and um, via myself if you are interested. Um, in terms of what students will need, obviously they will need normal stationery um, and equipment as you would do it for a college day, pens, paper, um, and rulers and calculators and so on. Um, we would advise students to get textbooks. There are two um, basic textbooks that cover most of the 
um, compulsory units. You can see a picture of the student book one there. There's also another book that goes with that. And I've put a picture on there of the revised um, BTEC National Applied Science Revision Workbook. That's useful for the, ex the examined units as well. So there are some books and we would advise students to get them uh, as well. Um, students will definitely need a scientific calculator. Sometimes students are happy to try and use their phones, but a proper scientific calculator um, is needed in these situations and uh, in the exams that they do as well. Um, it would all, it's also advisable for students to perhaps purchase their own lab coat. We do provide them in college, but sometimes students like to provide their own and they can look after it. Um, but there's lots of scientific lab work that we will do, so students will need a lab coat. Other protective equipment is provided. OK, um, so let's have a look where the sort of course may um, kind of uh, progress students to. The main pathway we would suggest is that a useful route is to the foundation degree in biosciences at the University Centre South Devon UCSD. Um, and myself and a number of the teachers on the Applied Science Level 3 course are actually lecturers on uh, that course as well. Um, so that's where we would hope student progress but it's useful to move on to any sort of university study in terms of bioscience, biochemistry, biology. Um, the way we've set it up it is a little bit more set up for a biological university degree than a chemistry or, or a physics degree. OK, um, so you would, would be useful to look at university um, websites to fit to try and understand uh, whether we do the right sort of modules for um, progression onto a physics or chemistry degree. Um, obviously, there's employment um, that could be useful. Students get on the, the level three BTEC course much more practical skills, opportunity to develop and enhance their practical skills and a greater depth of knowledge of practical work um, and lab based work than they would do on any uh, A level uh, courses. So that's really useful and has really important implications for future employment. Um, there's also the high apprenticeship as well, which links to the foundation degree in biosciences, uh, where students can continue on and do kind of learning, HE learning alongside an apprenticeship. And again, that's dependent on finding a workplace and the college um, should be able to help you uh, do that as well. So um, that's kind of an overview of the course and the expectations and where it might take you. Um, so let's have a look at the expectations. Sorry. So. Uh, in terms of what we expect from students, we would what, expect full attendance at all lessons and for students to arrive on time and be prepared with the pens, pencils and equipment and so on. Um, lots of the work that the students do, lots of the lecture lessons may include practical sessions or often are full in practical sessions that students need to complete assignments. So they need to um, work very quickly and competently through the um, practical work for that the laboratory work. Um, it's important as a consequence that students will then need to be organised and have good time management. They've got to manage their practical work and a, and a whole range of assignments from each different module, along with revision for exams and so on. And there are strict deadlines that we have to um, stick to for the work to be in. Uh, also for us as teachers to uh, mark the work and get it back to students so they uh, can, if they need to, resubmit the work. So it's a lot of juggling different things. Students will be expected to organise their time well. Uh, finally, if learners are completing the diploma, there'll also be your homework from your A-level to do that extra A-level alongside. Um, and sometimes that might mean doubling up. You might get two lots of homework um, at the same time. That's just the way it is with that one. So um, yes, lots of important time management issues there. And finally, um, let's just have a look at our facilities. As well as the great college uh, campus facilities, we've got specifically eight purpose-built uh, science labs at the college um, and within those labs there's access to a huge range of high level scientific equipment. Um, <clears throat> to highlight a couple we've got high quality microscopes, um, probably um, better quality than you might find in schools because we use some of the degree level equipment and, and microscopes so they're very high quality. 
We've got a PCR thermocycler that's used for DNA fingerprinting and, and that sort of thing. We've got various spectrographic instruments used for biochemistry and chemical analysis, looking at the contents of chemicals and, and so on. And um, that should say a laminar flow safety cabinet, not stately cabinet, apologise for that one. But um, we have lots of um, equipment that's uh, useful for uh, doing the work in a safe environment when we're using perhaps some fairly dangerous chemicals at time. And I will mention, I've already mentioned it before, that the teaching staff, most of the staff that teach on this course also teach on the science degrees. So the units being taught are given to each teacher, lecturer um, on the basis of their uh, um, background knowledge and, and experience. So you have very experienced specialist staff to help students through, um, through the course and the different modules. OK, um, so I hope you found this uh, an interesting introduction and useful. Please, um, uh, if you have any questions, please, um, please feel free to ask them. OK, uh, and again, my name is Matt Rossin uh, and thanks for listening. Hey, thank you very much, Matt. Following Matt's presentation there, um, if you would like to make an application with us, uh, please visit www.southdevon.ac.uk and enter the name of your chosen subject into the search box. You can navigate to your chosen course, check the details of the course once you've found the page and make sure it's the right uh, course for you for your career goals and aspirations. And then click apply now on the top right of the page to create an account with us. Following your application, you'll receive a phone call from a tutor to the number that you gave us. This is to discuss your course choice and to receive a conditional offer based on your grades. If you'd like guidance following this call, please inform a tutor during the call and our level six qualified information advice and gui guidance team will call you to follow up. Following results day, if your grades are not what you expect, our guidance team will be on hand to find the right course for you. Uh, this may include finding a different level course for you on the same subject. Please remember though, over summer and before September, you can always change your course by contacting us. To do this, please email us at inquiries at southdevon.ac.uk um, or alternatively call us on 08000 380 123. At South Devon College, we take our responsibility to support your learning very seriously. That's why our dedicated learning support team offers a range of services to assist your learning, including study skill support, additional maths and English support, the Lodge, which is a provision at our painting campus for learners with a diagnosis of autistic spectrum condition, British Sign Language Communicators, specialist equipment, dyslexia based packages and a tailored programmes of study for uh, including specific tutorial time. If you have any questions about support at all, please don't hesitate to contact us emailing support at southdevon.ac.uk. Uh, we also have a positive intervention team um, at the college, which is a team of people within the college that offers emotional and pastoral support to help learners achieve their potential, stay on course and develop personal and social skills in preparation for employment or further education. We work hard to support personal welfare and well-being and can put you in contact with other support agencies if needed. For inquiries regarding positive intervention, please email piadmin at southdevon.ac.uk. Financial support. So we offer a bursary at the college, which you may be eligible for if you live in a household with an earned income of under £25,000 before tax. We offer a range of support for students uh, for the bursary, including course equipment, uniform, DBS checks, meals, tuition fees, childcare and travel. So for those with a household income of between 21 and 25,000 um, pounds, you receive travel support in terms of a free bus pass. For those with a household income of under 21,000 pounds, you'll be eligible for the bus pass and our bursary, depending on the course and your individual circumstances. Bursary applications will be open on our website from the 25th of May 2020. In order to apply for the bursary, please visit www.southdevon.ac.uk. Scroll down on the front page and click on bursary support. And once on that page, please click on the top link which says click here to apply for your bursary. You can create an account, upload photos of your household income and submit your application to us. Adult financial support. If you're aged 19 or over and you'd like to study a level three access to higher education diploma or a level three to six vocational qualification, you'll need to pay for the cost of your course. 
the government can help with this in terms of the advanced learner loan. It's easy to apply for, doesn't take your household income into account, and doesn't involve a credit check. Repayments are linked to what you earn and not how much you've borrowed. You only have to start making repayments when you finish a course and you're earning over £25,725 a year. Until then, you don't need to pay anything back. You can make voluntary repayments at any time. If you take your studies on to higher education and complete a higher education course related to your access to HE or level three to six vocational qualification, Student Finance England will write off any outstanding balances you owe for your access course, meaning you do not have to repay it. For those who will not receive a bus pass through our bursary, we also have one available for buy, to buy. We're working in partnership with Stagecoach. We have secured an amazing South Devon College travel pass offer to be available to all South Devon College students. Our day rider travel pass covers all of Torbay, Kingswear, Dartmouth, Newton Abbott, Timoth and Dawlish and Totnes. And our Explorer travel pass covers the whole of the day rider zone plus South Brent, Ivy Bridge, Plymouth, Chudley, Ashburton, Bobby Tracy, Buckfastley and Exeter. We're currently finalising prices for this year, but last year our day rider travel pass cost £300 for the year and our Explorer travel pass cost £420 for the year. These can also be split down into term payment. In order to apply for the travel pass, please visit southdevon.ac.uk after the 25th of May, scroll down on the front page and click on travel support. Then you can click on SDC travel pass application form and email this to us at funding at southdevon.ac.uk. You'll find instructions on the page. We've also been asked when it'd be possible to come and see the college. Uh, we'll keep you updated e by email and inform you once we've received further advice from the government about when this will be possible. Um, if you have any further inquiries about South Devon College in general or your application, please email us at inquiries at southdevon.ac.uk. Alternatively, please phone us on 08000 380 123. We look forward to seeing you at South Devon College.